Kai Kumala has been following the story for us, and sports reporter Tepo Tobani brings us some reaction from the sports fraternity. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Uh, Kai, what's the latest in terms of the investigation, especially after the information we received? Two motorcycles, of course, or at least uh, cyclers, uh, shot through his car. His gardener was with him, but is there any updates on the investigation? Well, the latest that you've had from the police is that they are still working so hard to make sure that they crack uh, this particular case. But we spoke to the gardener, but, I mean, a great pity, not on camera, but he really gave us a snapshot of what really transpired. He really took us back to 6.25 last night as Mark was driving by so close to his household, and then suddenly there was uh, this motorcycle that just came out of the blue and just sprayed the vehicle with a bullet. And and of course, the very last words that he uttered to the garden was, go down, Pax, go down. Mm -hmm. So you could really see that this was really happening. And, and I mean, just listen to you say he said those last words to the garden. It makes me wonder, there were claims that this might have been a hit, a professional hit at that. Are police confirming any of that information? Well, it certainly does bear the hallmarks of a hit. At these rates, the police are very cagey. They're not really willing to share as much information. So they're just keeping it as part of their investigation for the murder case that has been opened. But also, more importantly, we spoke to the brother who was absolutely absolutely shaken. He said uh, they were working out things with his brother, Mac, but now then the tragedy has struck. So now uh, it's really, really sad for the family. All right, then. Well, Tapa, let me bring you in then. Let's talk about the man behind, of course, uh, you know, some of the football teams that he's played for, uh, just amongst others, Kaza Chiefs, uh, Orlando Pirates. Uh, we're seeing his super sport as well. What kind of a player was Mark Batchelor? Hello, Dumelo. I mean, he played for, he's one of a few players that played for the so-called big teams in the country. I mean, you mentioned the Sundowns, Kaiser Chiefs, and the Orlando Pirates. Uh, those are some of the teams that he played for, including your Vets University and also the old Dynamos. I mean, Mark was a, a, a striker, his position. I mean, uh, he's known. I mean, a lot of strikers, you know, they use their feet uh, to score goals, but he had a very good uh, tactical aspect when it comes to scoring goals. And that is when it comes to uh, using his head. He's got a lot of goals uh, via his head and uh, he made a lot of supporters happy at the time. I mean, uh, despite not playing international football but the fact that he played for those uh, three big teams, he won many trophies at them and also he came into prominence. Everyone, uh, especially the Orlando Pirates supporters, will remember when uh, he was part of that squad that won the 1995 CAF Champions League, the very first time that a South African club won uh, a continental tournament. I mean, uh, he was a colorful character. I mean, early uh, today I spoke to his former boss, that is uh, the Orlando Pirates chairman, Evan Koza, who spoke very well of him. I mean, uh, Mark was a white player. He played during those apartheid days. Right. It was not easy for, for white players, but uh, according to Ivan Koza, I mean, he, he, he really managed to, to acclimatize to conditions. I mean, playing in the township, you can right. imagine, at that time, yeah. uh, uh, before 1990 or before democracy. In fact, let's take a listen to what uh, the chairman had to say about Mark Bachelor. Mark Bachelor, you know, was a toughie. You know, Jack Bachelor, he never spoke about any kind of uh, special treatment. He played in the township, he was in the same dressing room, he was in the same shower, and he was just at home. Was, in fact, these are the people that are heroes to me, uh, that he, he know the difference of being living in pre-1994 and post-1994. And uh, for me, those are uh, really motivating, you know, uh, uh, icons. Uh, Mark Fish, you know, Gavin Lane, uh, Mark, Mark Bachelor, and uh, Keith Broad, uh, and the Karajinsky. So those guys, you know, must be saluted because they made South Africa to be seen to be normal. Uh, Why is it just abnormal? All right, then. Well, of course, I'm still with my colleagues. And just briefly, before I let you go, Kaya and uh, Tepo, rather, Kaya, I mean, uh, have there been any arrests been made so far? Well, at this rate, uh, police have not really apprehended anyone. But, I mean, this really appeared to be a very orchestrated crime because they used this motorcycle. But also, the neighborhood in Olivedale, they are absolutely shaken. A lot of people, they are saying it's a very quiet neighborhood. It's a first time, really, where you have such a heinous crime. But also, more importantly, the police, they are calling for justice. They are saying the perpetrators should be brought to book because now they've really just caused such a massive tragedy in the family. Yeah, indeed.
a great man left behind. But what legacy, briefly, Tepo, will he be leaving behind? I mean, uh, the 1995 uh, winning the, ch the CAF Champions League with Orlando Pirates, a lot of people will remember him uh, uh, about that because it was the first time, remember, that a South African team uh, goes out and competes in, in, Afri in an African continental competition and actually win it. And it also set a precedence. Uh, after 95, we know the story with the, the Springboks who won the World Cup and also Bafana Bafana 96 winning right. the AFCON. All right, then, colleagues, thank you so much for your time. Kaya Kumal and Seppo Tobani joining me, of course, to talk about the late Mark Batchelor, who unfortunately was shot dead just last night.